Mercedes is the big story of day two of F1 pre-season testing here in Barcelona, specifically its trick steering system. We're just outside the circuit de Catalunya Barcelona, as you can probably hear in the background, and I'm joined by Gary Anderson to explain what Mercedes is up to. So Gary, first up, what exactly is Mercedes trying to achieve? What are the problems it's trying to solve with this system? Yeah, well, as you say, first of all, the problem. Um, these cars, obviously, they generate huge amounts of lateral forces going around corners. So that means uh, everybody puts negative camber in the front of the car. That means the top of the tyres are leaning inwards. Uh, that also means that the, f the front tyre is running around on a very narrow edge going down the straights. But in the corner, that tyre deflects and it gives you the biggest contact patch possible, especially the fast corners. You also run toe out in the car, which means the, the car, the tyre is going along scrubbing with the front of it wider than the rear of it. And that's just to give stability. When you turn the car into the corner, you have to have a little bit of time before the front tyre really grips um, because you're waiting on the rear tyre picking up the grip. And so that, that's, you know, so a a, you know, hundreds of a second, thousands of a second even, but it still makes the car very, very different. The problem with that is that you're heating this inside part of the shoulder, especially going down the straights, and in long, fast corners, you're actually heating the, the inside corner, and the right-hand corner of the inside tyre is scrubbing along quite a lot. So you're overheating that sort of five centimetre part of the tyre, and that can lead to tyre blisters. So everybody's been trying to come up with that. You either take camber off, which hurts your grip in the fast corners, you take the toe out off, which means that the car is, is very pointy going into the, into the corner, and you don't want either of those two, to be honest. So that's a problem Mercedes is trying to solve, yep. balancing that up. Yep. What has it done? Well, they've got a steering system now, and the driver, obviously, just like a normal system, he can turn the steering wheel and the front wheels turn. But when you, he can also pull the steering wheel back or push it forward. So basically, what he's doing by pulling it back and forward is changing that toe. So when the steering wheel is back towards him, basically, the two front tyres are running parallel or maybe even a fraction of two in on them. And that means you're, you're not scrubbing that inside shoulder of the tyre. When he gets to the breaking point for the corner, the steering wheel, it pushes the steering wheel forward, which almost happens automatically because these cars, you know, five or six G braking, so there's no effort in doing it. Pushes the steering wheel forward, and basically the tyre, the, fr the front wheel's toe out, which means he has the, the stability on turn in, so the car's not nervous. Um, so it's, it's driver activated, as I keep saying, it puts another tool in the driver's toolbox. The steering of these cars is, is, does lots of functions, and not only does it steer the car around the corner, but where the push rod mounts to the uprights, it jacks the car. You can jack weight across the car. and the slower corners, it lowers the front ride height so you get more front grip. So, you know, the driver has these tools in his toolbox to use. It's about optimising the setup. And uh, it's always difficult to get the best out of a multi-functional system. But Mercedes have done a very good job on it and I'm pretty impressed. And it's amazing to see. We saw Lewis Hamilton earlier when he came onto the main straight and he was going along there, he'd pull it back and then it would, he'd push it forward. So there was a, a dramatic amount of, of play there. When you first glance at it, you think there's an actual genuine problem. But you've explained what it's, what it's doing. So how is it actually achieving that? What are the mechanics behind having that effect? Well, our colleagues at the race here have created this fairly, fairly basic little animation. And, and, you know, it's a mechanical linkage. You're not allowed to have hydraulics or um, electronics controlling this sort of thing, so it needs to be a mechanical linkage. Now, Mercedes will have been liaising with the FIA for quite a time about this because there is a facility there where they, you can ask them what their opinion is on it. They won't say it's legal or illegal, they'll give you an opinion and they'll say within our regulations we think that would probably be okay. But they, they, they can't stop other teams from protesting stuff. So they've just given Mercedes an opinion that it's, it's fully legal and I agree with them. As long as it's a mechanical linkage, and as you can see from our animation, the normal track rods are there connecting the wheels up. There's a small linkage within the steering rack of the car and when the steering column comes back and forward, that small linkage changes length because of the rotation of it on its pivots and it means the, the front tyres either go parallel or as I say a little bit of toe in or toe out for the corner. So a very simple, uh, very simple solution I'd say to what's been a, a lifelong problem. Well, James Allison, the Mercedes technical director, was asked about this earlier today. He didn't say much about the system. He confirmed it existed. He confirmed it was called the DAS, D-A-S, that's the acronym, the, the, the DAS. But what kind of gains do you think you can get from this? It's going to work the tyres less, so are we going to see marathon stints? How potent a weapon is this in terms of stint length, in terms of lap time? I think what we're seeing around Barcelona is them making sure the system works. You know, the only corner at Barcelona where I'd say you would like to, to um, 
maybe use it or play with it would be uh, turn three. It's a long, fast right-hander, and you scrub that inside tire. So basically, you know, you have the toe out on the car for normal corners for turning in, and then between turn two and three, you may try to run with less toe out just to, for the corner scrub, and I'm sure they'll try that. But what they're mainly doing at the moment, from what we see, is just using it on the straight. They're having the toe out as they have for all the corners, and they're having the straight ahead or toe in for down the straight. That will give them a little bit more straight line speed. It stops scrubbing that inside shoulder of the front tire. It will reduce the risk dramatically of the front tires blistering. Um, it will reduce the risk of that, that front tire overheating. And we see a lot of times you see the graining of the rubber peeling off the inside of that front tire. That's, this is a system is all to reduce that. Now, you know, normally if you're doing a 15, 18 lap stint, you know, does this allow you to do an extra lap, two laps, three laps? I think they'll have to experiment before they know. But circuits like Monza, where you have the Curva Grande, you have the Parabolica, you have long straights. Um, it will improve the straight line speed. It will improve. It will uh, reduce the scrubbing of the front tires because that's all just a loss. Um, and if they use it in the corner in the, the the straight ahead position, it will reduce that that wear on the front tire dr again dramatically. So your verdict? Are you impressed with this? Do you think it'll work well? Is it a real thumbs up for Mercedes? Um, yes, I think so. I wouldn't say that it's the end of the world to copy. Um, I mean, we come up with a solution for the animation to, to present it as how it might work. This is a, a might work in you know, 15 minutes. So it's not that difficult to, to put something together. Um, will other teams copy it? I think they will do. Um, but it just shows you the depth that Formula One engineers go to to try to find solutions for, for problems. Um, and that's happening up and down the grid. You know, it's, This is a visual thing we can see, but there's lots and lots of that sort of stuff going on all through the cars. Well, there's plenty more on the Mercedes DAS steering on therace.com. Don't forget the hyphen. Please do like and subscribe. And if you've got some opinions to share on this, please comment down here or also head to our social media channels.